Welcome everyone to the final installment of our series for Black History Month, our virtual Covet socials. We're super excited to celebrate this with you guys. Um, we've had so much fun content all month long. Um, we're going to be sharing a lot of it on our social page. So if you missed any of it, you'll be able to catch up that way. But we're really excited to have you guys here now with our very special guests who I will introduce in a second. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Amanda. I am the Director of Product Marketing for Covet Fashion. Um, I love hosting these events. I love being able to connect with so many people all over the world. And so I'm really glad everyone is here today. All right. Without further ado, I'm very pleased to introduce you to Coco and Breezy. Welcome. Hi, how are you all? We're so excited to be here. We are so excited to have you. So yeah, we'd love to just get a quick introduction of who you are and kind of how you started your brand. Okay, well, first, before I say anything, everyone, we're on a road trip, so please don't mind my phone bouncing up and down. <laughs> but um, I'm Breezy. This is Coco. We're co-founders of Coco Breezy Eyewear. We're DJs and producers, and we're also co-founders of the Lorca. And just a little backstory of how we started um, Coco and Breezy Eyewear was we grew up in Minnesota. We grew up in a place that, you know, wasn't very diverse, and we've always been individualists. And so Coco and I really always had like a thing for fashion and we knew we wanted to be entrepreneurs since we were in third grade. And so, you know, growing up, we really didn't have a lot. So we were really good at just creating our own resources and figuring it out. And what really inspired us to get into eyewear was actually we got bullied in middle school and high school. And that's how we actually found our love for glasses. It was like a level of protection to avoid eye contact with people. And then fast forward, we actually, um, we started, you know, we took an idea. We were very crafty young ladies and we bought some safety goggles, glued some studs and spikes on them and we made our glasses. And then from there, we we're like, oh my gosh, we should move to New York. So at um, 19 years old, we quit our job, sold our car, moved to New York with less than $500 each. And we started the eyewear company. And within like the three months of living in New York, we had people from Kelly Osborne to Shanti to Nicki Minaj to Lady Gaga wearing our glasses. And that was just confirmation for us that we were doing something right. And as we continued to do this DIY project that then started into a company, we then had to kind of step back and say like, hey, how can we actually create a scalable business? And now our eyewear is available in over... 400 eye care practices around the United States. We're also one of the, we are the first um, black owned eyewear company to launch in Nordstrom and hope to be the first ones to help bring in more. And we're just really excited about everything we've been doing. That is so amazing. And just how you've done everything yourself. And, you know, I was just kind of like reading, um, you know, how like the first time you did actually talk to investors, cause you didn't get take any investment for a very long time but the first time you did go talk to them you were still like kind of dressed in this punk style and really like committed to sticking to your to your um to who you were um can you talk a little bit about like why that was so important to you and just kind of you know standing your ground and you know just being who you were and being unapologetic about it yeah so we start we're still like that and I think that the bigger um and to date too we haven't raised any capital we've been bootstrapping so we're actually about to raise our first round this year, we're really excited about it. I think the bigger thing is we as entrepreneurs and being Afro-Latina women, um, growing up, we've never got to see entrepreneurs and businesswomen that look like us. And fortunately, we had um, parents that really allowed Coco and I to be individualists. And so we were raised literally to be ourselves. And so I think that when we were younger, we used to have this thing where even though we would still dress like ourselves, be super punk, walk into these business meetings, we were very insecure. We we're also insecure about our age because we were really young, but then we were sitting at tables with like 50, 60 year olds, like closing out deals. And we also didn't go to college. And so we had all these things hanging on our shoulders that didn't really give us confidence. But as we continued to grow and continue to learn and we saw more success in the business and we would talk amongst each other, we we're like, you know what? We have to continue to be ourselves because that's what created the brand. And that's what drives us to like work extremely hard. We had one person that actually told us, we had, we had a meeting, a brief meeting with this investor and I wore a suit, but it was like a cute yellow suit. And he was like, you look uncomfortable. You don't, it doesn't sound like you're being yourself. And I was like, you know what? I'm so uncomfortable. 
I I can't. I don't feel like I'm being myself right now. And I love a suit when I feel like I want to wear. It, but if I if I feel like I have to like dress the way to impress somebody, then I, I don't work at my best. So what I've learned is that I like to be unapologetically myself. And we hope that we can be leaders to show that like if you express yourselves on the outside, it doesn't matter. It doesn't determine how smart you are on the inside. Another thing too that we implement within our company culture with our employees is that even when we do interviews, people are always like, so when I come in for day one, what's the dress code? And we're like, we have, like, you don't have to like wear a suit. You have to, you don't have to wear what the status quo of what being professional is, because again, wear what makes you feel most creative, wear what is gonna make you feel like you're in your skin and wear what's gonna make you feel like you can perform at your best. I love that. That's such an amazing message. And it's such like, strong you know being strong role models and just supporting and I like that you recognize and like called out that okay our uniqueness is what makes this brand work and what's made you guys so successful so that you're unwilling to compromise on that I think is just such a powerful message to send um so I see a lot of comments in the chat of calling out that you guys are twins um I know we have some twins in our uh, some sets of twins in our audience right now too um so I'd love to hear more about just kind of how you work together how you like kind of divide up responsibilities and what it's like working together as twins and as sisters sure so when we first started if there's any other twins in here you know what I'm talking about we were stuck to the hip so when we first started our brand and our company we literally used to we used to share a cell phone like even you guys, this is kind of embarrassing, but my voicemail <laughs> is the same. I haven't, I haven't changed my voicemail for like 10 years. My voicemails and my, I'm Coco. My voicemail says, hey, you've reached Coco and Breezy. I haven't changed it since we used to share a phone. That's Aww. so nostalgic. That's like an intro to a song or something. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, I have the same voicemail. We used to share a phone. We used to um, do emails together. We would run to the post office together. Like it was challenging because we didn't know who we were as individuals. And then we had to take some time out to like, I had to get to know who I was, Coco. And then Breezy had to get to know who she was as Breezy. What we realized is that Breezy's traits were, she's super creative. Mm -hmm. She is a risk taker and extremely creative. And a fast decision maker. Yeah, very quick decision maker. For me, I was always like the mother out of the friend group. I was always analytical and operational. And so we took those personality traits to put into our business. And so Breezy oversees all design and product development. And I oversee our marketing initiatives and like business growth. And it's been so beautiful mm-hmm. when once we like really realized who was good at what. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. All right, so as I mentioned, you guys have been with Covet, I think since the very beginning. Um, and I would just kind of love to hear a little bit about your experience, why you enjoy partnering with us. You guys were really at the forefront. Like when we first started, a lot of brands didn't even have e set up. So you guys were really kind of pioneers, like in this digital space. And we just love to hear about like what the, um, relationship has meant to you guys. Yeah. The relationship has meant the world to us. Cause I mean, COVID supported us in the beginning of our company where we actually needed that extra marketing. So I think that we've gotten a lot of really awesome discovery from customers that may not have known who Coco and Breezy Eyewear were, but we have a lot of customers that come from Covet. So that's been really awesome. There's some times as well where Covet will showcase some of the products even before we launch it on our website, like a sneak peek, because we'll give that to you all before. And um, yeah, it's fun to just like see our product gamified as well and really get to see people like how they pair it, like what outfits they pair with, I get inspiration from it. People tag us all the time with how they pair, you know, the glasses with like different outfits. So it's really cool to to see it like that. All right, so I'd love to talk just a little bit more about your collections and kind of where you get inspiration from. Crazy will take that over. Yeah, so she designs everything. Yeah, so I'm the designer. So the way I actually get my inspiration, I don't necessarily get inspiration from fashion. I get a lot of inspiration from from different art, from different experiences, and also just from like buildings, architecture, um, lamps. Lamps. I I did a collection that like, I really love the shape of the base of certain lamps. And I took little elements of that and included them like on the the arms of the, the glasses. 
And so I, I put my inspiration from anything and everything, but it's mostly a feeling as well. I kind of just allow my hand to just flow with however, whatever emotion I'm feeling. And sometimes I get creative block. I get that quite often. And as we scale our company, um, there's more deadlines. And so one of my biggest challenges as a designer is to continue to stay inspired. I can't like, now that there's deadlines and we are we're producing, you know, thousands of glasses, I have to actually like, I can't just wake up and be like, oh, I feel like designing. I have to like, actually do it by a certain day. Awesome. So you guys just released a collaboration with Zenny. Um, would you want to talk about that a little bit and kind of how that came to be? Yes. So um, if you guys don't know, Zenny is an online optical retailer. They sell affordable glasses. All their glasses are under about $30 or $40. And they were on our list of brands that we wanted to collaborate with. The way we came about that collaboration is we knew that we wanted to do kids because Breezy and I, we're actually on a kids' TV show. It's called Wonderama. And we were always, um, we've always done things in the kids' market. We're on the kids' TV show. We, we've directed about like 10 music videos that were for Disney, which, which were in the kids' market. We worked with a, a girl band that we were doing all the creative direction and music videos, and they were kids. So we were like, you know what? We need to tap into the kids' market for eyewear. But if we tap into the kids' market, it has to be affordable because when we were younger, we always wanted to dress stylish, but our parents couldn't afford expensive glasses. So we teamed up with Zenny and we created a beautiful collection. And while we were in that process, um, you know, we had a lot of challenges. We were working on this collaboration for about a year and then the pandemic hit. And so for us, we, we were all about like our, our brand. We, we always want to have integrity. And so we go with what the world tells us to do. And so even though we had this huge campaign planned out, um, the messaging was already done. And then once we found out that kids weren't going to be going back to school and, you know, we had the civil rights era that was happening in the movement, we changed up our messaging, we changed up the campaign. And we were like, we have to, this is more than just the glasses. We have to create this collection to really help these kids. And so we actually named every frame after an affirmation. So there's glasses that are called the I am fearless, I am happy, I am brave. Yeah, and so now when the kids put their glasses on, they can recite it and say, I am happy, I'm fearless, I am brave. And something too that we're really excited about is that we um, partnered with Child My Institute for the Healthy Brain Network. Um, a portion of the profits they go to they go to help um, mental health research sources for the black community because you know in our growing up being black women in our community a lot of people don't really talk much about mental health it's not a to help give better access to our community for mental health resources and so yeah the collaboration is gorgeous and it's, it's doing really well but this piece and this collaboration is like so special to our heart because it's bigger than just the glasses it's getting the message out there and being there for the kids such an amazing collaboration and such an amazing message and program that you guys are supporting. Um, what is kind of your role within the Child Mind Institute? Do you, you know, is there other like mentorship opportunities that you offer or other things that you do to work with children? Yeah, so um, even with outside the Child Mind Institute, just Coco and I in general, we've been mentoring kids, for even years. youth for years. I, I can get it back us being 18 years old, going to high school, mentoring people our age, we graduated high school early. And even, um, you know, we didn't go to college, but we were 20 years old going to Princeton teaching entrepreneur classes. And um, a couple other Ivy League schools that we had the privilege to, to go and like teach some entrepreneur classes and, and mentor some of those students. Um, something that we're very passionate about now is that we also mentor a couple of black owned eyewear companies because when we first started our company, we had a couple mentors, but no one really wanted to teach us how to actually design and produce eyewear. And for us, we believe that, I think a lot of times people get intimidated when they're in a space where there's not a lot of you, but you can't do it by yourself. And so our goal is to continue to, you know, share the knowledge that we know and our expertise with other people, especially black owned eyewear companies who didn't have the resources that we didn't have. And now we have the resources, we have the abundance to, to share it. It's amazing. And you guys have more than just the eyewear brand. Do you want to talk about just some of your other 
entrepreneurial ventures? Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. So we, um, we're, we're DJs and we've been DJing for almost like seven years now. So I think almost seven years. And oh my gosh, I cannot wait until we can actually DJ in front of people. But until then, it's in virtual DJ sets. And we actually just released um, two new songs. Well, one song we released in June of 2020. And then we released another song in March of, was it March? 2020. No, it wasn't March. It was like four months ago. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm losing track of time. But yeah. anyway, we launched another song about four months ago. And um, yeah, we, we love it. I am. Um, we have other cool ventures too. We have a yeah. we um, we're co-founders of the Lorca, which is a real estate property upstate New York. Um, it is in a really beautiful area. There's four houses. Five. Oh, five houses. Sorry, we have five houses, <laughs> and um, they're really cool, really minimal, um, super Instagramable, Instagramable, very cozy. Like you feel like you want to meditate, but you also want to like get your picture on as well. And they're short-term rentals. And I think the cool part about, you know, we give people our eyewear, which is your vision. Music just heals your soul. And then going up to nature and staying in a cabin. Like for your wellness. And so for us, we we kind of like see it as it's all the Coco and Breezy brand, but it's different mediums that come, they all come from my heart. And it gives everybody that same feeling and brings people together. We're actually um, extending the Lorca it's a secret, but I'll tell you all since we're now like on Instagram, but we're possibly extending to getting a motel. Oh, wow. Yeah. How do you fit all of this in? How do you do all of this? And you're on a TV show. Like, how do you find time for all of it? Um, so we actually have multiple teams. Thank you, Christina. Um, thank you, Christina. So we have multiple teams. I think that's one thing that when we first started our company and DJing and everything, we did everything by ourselves which I'm grateful for because we were able to understand the business of each aspect of things. But as we continue to grow, we have a, a team and employees for our eyewear company. And then for our music, we have um, management and also for our like, brand partnerships, we have agents. And then for the Lorca, we have a whole separate team. But one thing that Coco and I do is that we make sure that everybody from all teams are all aligned on the same page so we can cross pollinate. So there's certain times where we have maybe a press outlet or we had like West Elm that rented the Lorca, but then they also included our eyewear within the campaign that was also that they shot their products at the Lorca. So it's really, it's been kind of fun to be able to cross pollinate and, and introduce customers that may like our music to our eyewear or vice versa. That's so cool. So kind of, I guess, in the spirit of mentorship, then, is there any, like, advice that you would give to anyone who's, like, looking to make a change or maybe just take on a new project that's kind of outside of the realm of what they're normally comfortable with or what they're normally doing day to day? Yeah. Well, one thing I want to say is right now we're doing multiple things, but when we first started, we started with one. And I think that that's, that's one piece of advice I would give is that in your beginning stages, when one thing is not fully stable, it can be challenging to try to do, like, three or four things at once, because that means you're only giving 20% here, 30% there, and a small percentage there. And so once our eyewear, even though we always loved music and we always knew we wanted to be DJs, our eyewear company just happened to like pop off first. So we had to put music to the side and really grow the eyewear brand and put a lot of time into that. And then once that structure was like structured, that's when we were able to like spend time on our music. So I think that that's really important that um, you understand how to really like delegate your time and spread out your time to, if you are going to do multiple things, to make sure you like let that one thing that's a hundred percent turn into like ninety five or a hundred, and then add on and everything else. Yeah, another thing that I would love to share as well is that to understand that things do take time, and it's not overnight. Mm -hmm. And I would even say this right here, where we are today, was like ten years of very hard work. It was not an overnight success at all. I would say 15 years. Yeah, yeah, even maybe 15 years. <laughs> we started off on MySpace on the internet. Like, that was like our, that's how we started, started. Like, we've been yeah. going hard for a long time. Yeah, we've been going hard for a long time. But in the generation that we live in today with social media, it can be easy to compare success with someone else's success that we see. But just know that social media, everyone posts their best things. But no one posts, like, the challenges that you have. And within a journey that you have, I call it the roller coaster effect. You have your ups and you have your downs. But it's your job that when you go have your down times to actually show gratitude to, towards those times. 
show gratitude because then you have that time to step back and reanalyze the situation. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we get so used to that feeling and that rush of going up, but any challenge that I've had, you know, from like years ago, I can share a story maybe about seven years ago, we spent all of our money to order this production for a distributor overseas and they received all the product. And after receiving the product, they said that everything was damaged and they had to return it back. And during that time, we literally were at our last, at a like sign up for food stamps. I didn't know how I was gonna pay my rent. And from there, um, I actually, I never freaked out. I was actually- When we got that email, all we said was, we called each other and we're like, did you see that email? And we're like, yeah, did you see it? Okay, what's next? Yeah, we're like, we were actually, I was so grateful for that moment. That moment changed my life because it made me sit down and say, what do I need to focus on for my high priority things? What are low priority things that I shouldn't put as much focus on? What are my high money generating things? Or what are the low money generating things? And I realized I was spending too much time on the low priorities. The low priorities and low money generating. Yes. And so the next month after that, once I switched up my mindset, everything changed. And we're here today. (laughs) But I share that story with so much transparency just to tell people that it's not all glitz and glam at all. And you should be proud of those moments. That's such an inspiring story of just like resilience. And I like what you said about priorities and also just it makes sense because all of your different projects, like you said, kind of come from the same core values um, and kind of align together. Um, yes. So just kind of, and then keeping those priorities in mind as you're trying to balance everything. Um, yeah. Great advice. Thank you.